Hi guys, welcome back to the barn. It's quite a miserable day outside today. It looks like autumn has finally arrived in southwest France. So my Facebook history tells me today that my Rage 5 is two years old. So happy birthday to the Rage 5. As I've now finally amalgamated my two workshops, I thought today was a good day to make a video about the Rage 5 saw and the DeWalt table saw. I've had the Rage 5 saw for two years and I bought the DeWalt saw in 2019. So it's around about four years old. The first thing to do, because we are going to compare these saws and the features and benefits of each saw. Firstly, I think it's prudent to mention the price of these two saws because even though they're both at the budget end of the scales, there is slight difference between the price. So the Rage 5 I paid 249 euros for, which is very similar to 249 pounds. Currently they're selling for about 330 pounds so there's a little bit of inflation there over the last couple of years and the DeWalt saw is 435 pounds the best price I could find from FFX which is the company that I used to buy most of my UK tools from and that price doesn't seem to have moved much over the years so when I bought this I bought it as part of a Black Friday deal and I think I paid certainly started with 300 I have 330 pounds in my mind so basically as it stands with there's a pricing point of about a hundred pounds be between the two saws now i think if you shop around especially for the rage 5 you'll get that a little bit cheaper and maybe make that difference of about 150 pounds indeed if you still use my small loft workshop code when checking out from evolution you'll get a 10 percent off that price so some of the things that we will speak about in the next few minutes you have to consider that with the 100, 150 pound price point difference. As I've said, I've had these saws for two years and four years. Neither saw have let me down in that period. They've always proved to be good, reliable machines. So the Rage 5 is a much bigger machine and you do get a lot for your money. Now, of course, the first thing that you notice about the Rage 5 is it comes on its own cart. If you want to purchase a cart for the DeWalt, that will set you back around about another £150. So if you look at both saws when they stood on their own stand, you've got a pricing differential of around about £300. Now you can see that the Rage 5 is a much bigger saw. It stands around 3 foot tall, 37 inch tall, and the actual size of its bed all closed up is about 880 millimetres, 34 and a half inch, and in width is 29 inch, where the DeWalt is just shy of six millimeters square and stands at about 340 millimeters high. Now it would appear that most of the people who have this DeWalt saw on YouTube tend to build it into a workbench rather than have it on a stand and that's possibly the way I'm going to go for this. Especially with having both saws I do like to wheel the Rage 5 out into the garden give me a little bit more workshop space couldn't do that today because it's too wet but this one I think I'm going to keep it and build it into a bench I do have a couple of ideas how I would do that in terms of the weight this one weighs about 22 kilos and you do tend to move it around more of it not being on a stand the other saw the Rage 5 is about 28 and a half kilos 29 kilos but because it's on wheels you don't really notice that weight the tabletop on the Rage 5 does extend even further I'll just see if I can extend it with the DeWalt sat on top so you can sort of see the full size of the open table so there you go in the open position this saw is quite big actually it's 50 inch wide 1270 millimeters anyone who ever saw any of my small loft workshop videos I wouldn't have got this saw into the workshop I only had that 600 millimeter wide hatch to get into the loft and then between the roof trusses I had about 1300 maybe probably would have opened the saw up in that space but I certainly wouldn't have been able to walk around it and if you have a really tight workshop then this one may be more suitable now the other thing that I have done with this saw just because I move it in and out I constructed it I put the handles on upside down with the handles on upside down it actually does give you a little bit of material storage when you're sewing and I quite like that people have commented to say that the machine would not be able to be wheeled around when in that position I don't find that and I probably wheel my saw around more than most 90% of the time I use it I use it outside now one comment I do get a lot is the quality of the fences so let's look at the fences the DeWalt one is 600 millimeter length of boxed aluminium and the Rage 5 is a piece of boxed aluminium, slightly longer because the machine is slightly bigger. The fences are the same really, the same quality aluminium section. 
the DeWalt is higher and the Rage 5 is not quite as high and a little bit fatter. All intents and purposes, they're very similar. Just to mount the DeWalt saw, there's a couple of little nipples here. One there, one there, and also one at this side. Mount the saw. On either three of them, difference of these positions are the graduations on the scale. The lock for the mechanism is there. And one thing that's really good, and I think where most people like this fence, is this rack and pinion. So that locks all the way over there. You can lock it right off. In that position, you can lock that off to 21 inch. If you use this position, that gives you a 24 and a half inch, so you can rip an 8x4 sheet right down the centre if you need to. One thing that DeWalt has done a good job of is this little rip fence, which has a couple of positions. When it's in the bottom location, it means it's level with the tabletop, so it will support your materials as you're pushing the materials through. When it's in the... When it's in the when it's actually sat on the table top. And the reason for that is when you have your crown guard in there, it collides with the fence if you're doing a small rip cut. So actually you can wind this in. So it's sat underneath the crown guard. Let's just move this off the way to show you the fence of the Rage 5. The Rage 5 fence just drops into this groove here and locks off like that. And then of course you can extend the whole thing. And again, it reads off two scales, one either side there, just depending on which side of the blade you're cutting. Again, if you extend the table and use the fence right at the, its end point, so you can actually rip 26 inch. Doesn't really matter in the scheme of things because on both sides you can rip an 8 before sheet straight down the middle. I've never had a problem with squareness and I've seen people comment say this fence doesn't cut square. I've never had a problem with it, but what there is, and I'll just demonstrate with a piece of wood, to lock the fence you need to push it all the way down. And when you do that, the piece of wood then sits straight to the fence. If you don't lock it down properly, so you leave it say there, which is locked, then this little piece of paddle handle here just knocks the timber out slightly. And you're talking of a fraction of millimeters, but when you're putting sheets through, See, so just against the fence there, it's just not up against the fence. There's a slight gap, but you push it all the way down and that goes. It's caught me out a couple of times, just not putting the handle down fully and then putting a sheet on and then mid-cut thinking, why is that not against the fence? And I do wonder whether other people are having that issue as well. So when you lock the fence down, make sure that you push it all the way down and have the paddles almost in that recess underneath. The difference of the power switches are slightly different. This has just got an on off switch. And I have seen people replace this unit for a paddle. So you've got a big stop. Whereas on the Dewalt, you've actually got a big paddle stop switch and also you've got a safety switch so it can't press. So the switch on the Dewalt definitely wins the prize for the best design. In terms of the hiring and lowering mechanism, they're both very similar and also the turnover to 45 degrees on the Rage 5. The raise and lower with that handle on the DeWalt. It's that one for the 45 degrees. Just turn that over, lock it off. And with the DeWalt, you just turn that over and lock it off with the Rage 5 and push the handle in it, it runs on these teeth here. If you want to just slightly dial it in, you can just do that. Don't really think there's much difference in it really. I don't think there's a clear winner. In terms of the motor size, the DeWalt is an 1850 motor. This one is, I believe, a 1500 motor. I've never seen any difference in the two. They both cut well. Bearing in mind that this has a bigger blade. I usually run third party blades on both. This one has got the Saxton blades in. And in the DeWalt, I have a Freud blade. Both blades cut really well, but the blade that comes with either sort, again, is good. The DeWalt one is a standard blade, that's fine. And the multi-material blade that comes in the Evolution are a great blade. I've cut through large pieces of three inch timber with screws and nails in, sadly. Uh, and they've coped with it perfectly fine. If I'd have done that with the blades I have in the saws at present, I would have ruined the blades. So don't dismiss the blade that comes with the Evolution. 
I do think though that because the Evolution Blade has a 25mm bore and the DeWalt has a 30mm bore, there would seem to be a wider range of saw blades available. For the DeWalt, uh, I have a 6mm grooving blade. I have a 6 Go on on it. Look at the size of that thing. I have a I have a six millimeter grooving blade that I use in the Dewalt for draw bottoms and things like that. That's a really nice blade. I do believe there is one available for the Rage of a twenty five mil bore. In terms of blade size, this Dewalt runs a two hundred ten millimeter blade, and the Rage Five runs a ten inch two hundred fifty. So if you're wanting to cut larger stock, three inch stock, then the Rage Five is a better saw for that. I very rarely cut three inch stock. I'm usually cutting two inch or one inch stock. On the odd occasion, when I did the terrace last year and when I did the carport and I needed to cut some three inch timber, the Rage 5 is the saw that I would reach for for that. DeWalt do make a 10 inch bladed saw, which is probably the saw that I would have bought when I bought this, but the cost is huge. At the moment, I had a look this morning just before I made this video, and the 10 inch version of this saw, which to me looks identical other than the size of the motor and the size of the blade, is almost 800 pounds. So it's almost 500 pounds more than the Rage 5. That is a huge jump, and I think once you get to an 800 pound saw, then there is other saws in that price point that you would consider. And even if you did rip a three inch plank down you can always do it in two bites by tipping it over that's usually my get out of jail when I need to do that so let's have a look at the guardian on the two saws so the DeWalt comes with two riving knives one of them is just a bladeite riving knife the other one is this with the crown guard and the anti-kickback on which is the one I usually use when you have a blade height riving knife on it let, lets you groove over the top of the blade also lets you cut things like rebates and dados I know there's always a debate on YouTube about crown guards. To the letter of the law and the way that you're taught when you go to joinery college, as I did years ago, you should always use a crown guard. And that's because in the, certainly in the UK, I'm not actually sure about here in the EU or in France, but in the UK, the Woodworking Act, 1974 Woodworking Act, expects that you use a crown guard. Most people seem to take them off. I know I've seen a lot of American based YouTubers that say well it's only there for dust collection maybe that regulation doesn't apply to the US they do get in the way of course the, the crown guards are a little bit clumbersome and do get in the way but if, I'm sure if you have an accident you really wish you'd have had it on of course we've got the more expensive saw stop type machines now not use wood I don't even think they sell them in, in in the EU I think they just are sawless to American supply which is a shame because they look an absolute beautiful piece of machine. There's a little knob under the table, just a case of releasing that and then just sliding the crown guard on. And there we go. That's as quick to fit and remove as that. In terms of dust extraction, DeWalt have done a really good job with the rear of the crown guard with this port on the back that accepts their airlock system, which is a fantastic system, quite expensive. I have one, now this saw will take two, they do sell like a Y-shaped one, so one extractor can extract from both ports, usually because I'm lucky enough to have two extractors in the workshop, if I'm doing some really dusty cutting, I'll actually just put an extractor in the back of this and an extractor in the back of that. The airlock system is great, because it just either goes on there and locks off, or it goes on to the adapter that fits in the port on the back of the saw. The crown guard on the Evolution is slightly different. Again, it has a dust pot on the back and it's quick release in terms of a spring and a bolt that goes through the hole in the back of the riving knife. So that goes on like that. Sadly, if anybody saw my video at Christmas, I did break this when I moved it and I've got a little bit of timber stuck inside there just to keep it supported. The riving knife is the same height as the blade so you can groove stroke rebate over the blade if you wanted because I broke the crown guard at Christmas I actually did buy a third party one and I've yet to use it because the hole that's in the back of the riving knife is too small 
for that bolt I actually need to open that up a, a little bit and as yet I've not got round to that or even decided whether I wanted to do but other than that that's actually which actually got a bigger dust port on the back as well so I was going to use that I've just not got round to installing that yet in terms of insert plate that's the one that actually comes with the saw but I'm running Evolution's zero inset plate that they very kindly sent me which is aluminium with a eye durability plastic insert for 30 pounds i think that's a great little inset plate these are quite difficult to make an insert plate for it's probably easier to make one for the dewalt than it is for the rage 5 just because this is about eight nine millimeters thick three eighths of an inch thick so i think you can make this out of a piece of three inch stock the one on here is so thin it's really difficult to actually get a piece of material to sit in there and then lock it in. I've never made one for this. I've never really had the time or, it, to be honest, the inclination to make one. But I do like the fact that I've now got one on the Rage 5. Now, one issue I think the Rage 5 does suffer from is dust collection. It has a cowl on the bottom of the blade, which sits quite tight to the blade and it builds up with material. And then you've got to take the bottom of the machine out to take all the gunk out of the bottom and then refit it because every now and again when you wind the blade down it sits just under the surface of the table and the blade won't fully retract so every now and again you've got to clean it out i think zero insert play not necessarily what it's targeted to do gives you much better dust extraction or actually keeps a lot more of the dust above the table and it doesn't choke it up so i think that's really good but the cowl on the underside of dewalt is much deeper and it's also lined with sort of a canvas bag so it actually does a much better job of the dust extraction and probably the dust extraction part would be in a much bigger bore albeit you can step it down if you go with the adapter it goes to the airlock system just seems to do a better job of dust extracting it's probably not as many holes in the blade surround so you get a lot better suction and a lot better dust extraction and i've seen a lot of people on the on the rage 5 grill just actually just remove the cowl or they've the, the, they've either removed the cowl or they've adapted it i don't like to remove mine because i have Gracie, my little dog running around, I'm always a bit wary that when I'm using it, she might just put her head up inside the saw. Probably not going to happen, but I don't want to take that risk. Dust extraction unit that, again, Evolution very kindly sent me. She does fit the dust pot on the back of the saw. She doesn't actually fit the dust pot on the back of the, of the blade. Although the, when you buy the saw, there is a pipe that joins from here onto the pot on the back. I honestly don't know what I've done with it. It joins the two together, so you only need the one extraction for two. So basically, where do Walt send you that little Y-shaped pipe for £80, £90 pounds to do the two? Kind of the DeWalt comes with their own sort of system when you buy it off. Even though Evolution has sent me the inset plate and that vacuum cleaner, I did buy this so with my own money. Right, my wife has just told me there's some custard ready, so I'll see you in a minute. So the big question is which saw to buy or if I had to lose one, which one would I lose? And it is a really hard question. If you've got a tiny workshop, then the Rage 5 may be slightly too big. If you buy the DeWalt, it's more money. It's £100, £150 more money, depending on where you buy it from. Then you would have to make a stand for it or spend another £150 to buy a stand. If you need a three inch rip, then maybe you would go for the Rage 5. Although with a two and a quarter inch rip, ripping three inch stock is not that much of an issue. There's always a workaround. If you're ripping eight before sheets down or big sheet sizes, then you can do that on both. The build quality on the DeWalt is probably slightly better. You've got a bigger motor, but you are paying another £150 for that. It's a really tough choice which one to go for. I think from what I do here, bearing in mind that I've had the Rage 5 for two years, it's not let me down. I move it in and out of the workshop. So I would be happy to carry on working here with the Rage 5 and get rid of the DeWalt. If I had to go back to the small off workshop, I would choose the DeWalt. But I'm in a very fortunate position where I now have both and I will keep both. I think I'm going to make slightly different use out of these. I will carry on using the Rage 5 for working out in the garden and for cutting up larger pieces of timber 
and I will build a workbench eventually for this and use it for much finer work and primarily because I'll be running different kind of blades I'll have a, a rip blade in the Rage 5 and I'll have a more of a utility blade or a crosscut blade in in the DeWalt but I think if you're in the market for the saw and you've got the budget and a consideration for both you can't go wrong with either really they're both really good saws but they're my thoughts I'd be keen to know your thoughts thanks for watching and I'll see you next week when I'm hoping it's not quite as soggy outside the workshop see you soon bye